So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about this really interesting mechanical pencil from Parker called the Italia. It's I-T-A-L-A. -A. Not really sure how you would say that, but I think it's Italia. Uh, it was designed in Italy in the 1980s, and it was designed, as I understand it, to be a disposable mechanical pencil and pen set, a ballpoint pen set, sold through Parker. It was uh, going to be released in 1983, is my understanding, based on the online histories. And uh, once the senior leadership at Parker found out that some people were developing what would be a disposable pen or pencil, they freaked out, canceled it, but there are some of these units around and you could find them on eBay and other places. Uh, some of them are going for crazy prices, some you could find uh, for very cheap, depending if you know what you're looking for. But it is uh, a Parker, it's generally available, and it's uh, just a really interesting view back into the company's history, plus it's actually a pretty cool little pen or pencil, depending on what you could find. So this is it, uh, it's all plastic, super lightweight, it's like maybe six or seven grams, uh, and it's, I can understand why it was designed to be, or developed to be disposable. There's, there's really nothing here, it's all plastic. It's a pretty interesting departure from the uh, kind of more classic days of Parker. Maybe 80s are getting towards like the tail end of their prime days, but uh, definitely interesting to see from Parker back then. So like I said, this is the mechanical pencil. It's a just a few components, all plastic. It has this really interesting shape where it's wider at the grip area and then gets very narrow at the top. So you get a super light pencil, but it's actually relatively comfortable to hold. You have a nice textured plastic here and then these ridges or these lines here. You can see that a small, sorry about that, a small pipe pokes out, it's 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil. And then we have a seam here, which is actually really interesting. We'll get to that in a second. Then we have a Parker arrow style clip. The arrow is printed on, it's not arrow shaped. Uh, we haven't seen Parker do a lot of plastic clips. This is a pretty fragile clip. I wouldn't really rely on this. It's probably one of the things they pointed out in the eighties as not being up to spec, but it does have the arrow shape, which is distinctively Parker. And they do have some pencils and pens, even now, that have the arrow either stamped or printed on there, not, and the, the, you know, the clip isn't itself arrow shaped, but you could see the arrow. That's like something Parker still does to cut costs. As far as that seam goes, it's very cool. Basically, this is a kind of a double knock, I'll say. It has an exposed pipe here. You push this out, the light comes out, no problem, as you'd expect. Say you're gonna put this in your pocket, you twist the pencil, this piece, the lower piece extends from the upper and now that pipe is hidden and you won't have anything jabbing into your, you know, your pocket or if you have it in your shirt, it won't be stabbing you in the chest, whatever. Uh, nowadays, it's nice because you could throw it in a bag and it won't gouge your laptop. That probably wasn't much of a concern in 1983, but you know, it wouldn't rip up anything you had with you. When you're ready to use it again, you just grab the two halves and see if we can get a better view of that. Yep. Now it exposes, it's very, very simple, but very effective. Kind of crazy that more pen companies and pencil companies haven't done something like that in the past. Having that exposed pipe on a drafting style pencil is obviously pretty annoying from a travel standpoint. Plus so many drafting style pencils are dropped accidentally. The pipe is bent. Uh, this will solve that. The rest of the pencil is very simple. See a couple uh, like little facets here, which I think are really nice. Kind of cleans up the design a little bit. See that logo, the Italia. Again, I think it's like Italian or Italy, not Italia, but who knows? Parker logo. There's that clip. Clip is definitely not meant to last. And then at the top, we see a very simple plastic component. You can see it has the hole there, which is a popular way to know it's a mechanical pencil because you could look through and see the eraser. It was a, the ballpoint version. Generally wouldn't have a hole there. You pull this piece out, you get at the eraser. You can see this one is 
Uh, basically, I think this one was new old stock. And then put that back. This thing doesn't go on super great. Pull this piece out. You see a little plug there that is what holds it in. And then uh, nothing else to it. No uh, cleaning rod, anything like that attached. The plastic is, you can see some seams in it. And, uh, you know, is it, I guess it, it's not like that nice. It's, it's fine. When you hold a pencil, it feels very light and flimsy. And I'm not surprised that this was a designed to be a disposable pencil. It's way nicer than a typical disposable pencil from the, you know, from the nineties or the two thousands. But, uh, still it, it's not like a, uh, you know, a heavy duty rotring or something you'd expect from Parker or someone back in the day. It is a light, thin mechanical pencil. Put it up against, uh, let's see what we have here. Like here's just a normal wooden pencil. Here's a Uniball 307, obviously much, much later generation object, but uh, I just trying to look for some reference items here. This is a very small uh, Pilot Acro 300 pen, which is about as small as a pen I would have, you know, just I would keep on my desk. So you can see quite small. And then perhaps the best comparison of all, here is a Bic Crystal. A little bit more appropriate to show an older design. As far as writing goes, the, well, the click is actually pretty nice. I'll just say before I get going. Pretty nice, clean click mechanism. Uh, I like that. I haven't found a good way to, uh, well, here, we'll show this. This front piece comes off, but uh, you can see all the hardware is inside is plastic. And I haven't really taken it apart too much was I haven't found a good way to really get too much at it. You could see if you start playing with this, stuff does come apart, uh, but I haven't taken all the pieces out of it just because I didn't want to break this sort of old and seemingly fragile plastic. You could see this is basically a sleeve or pipe, we'll call it. And right here we have the channel that the uh, that is used to the white balance is freaking out. Uh, that is used to move the lower half up and down. So it's very simple. It's just it's just some threading. Like makes sense, right? And then uh, so let's see how this goes. What you have to do is you have to find the right piece, and then once you find that channel, it it works it works totally fine. But again, I haven't taken the, the insides apart. They're in there and I've, <laughs> I've definitely broken some vintage Parker mechanical pencils in the past, taking them apart. So I'm just gonna say some of these are really not designed to be serviced and they're certainly not designed to be serviced, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years after they're made. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. As far as the writing goes, uh, this is a pretty okay mechanical pencil. It's a little bit light, a little bit thin, but I do like using it and it does the job nicely. Uh, it's one of the lightest pencils I own, but uh, it still writes nicely. This is the... If you're going to ask, in case you're wondering, this is not the original lead that was in it. I've since changed that lead out, but... Uh, so who knows what it was like at the time, but this is just some standard Pentel or whatever graphite. So Parker Italia. The grip section, I would say, is a little, it's not super smooth, like it's not super grippy, I'll say. It's smoother than it looks, even though these ridges are pretty distinct. I always feel like I'm, as I hold it, I feel like I just wanna, my hand just wanna slip down and that, that shape, as we've seen with the Lamy 2000 fountain pen and some others, uh, it just kind of wants you to just, your fingers always feel like they're sliding down. But it is fairly comfortable and it's fun to use. And I like how light it is. 
you know, I think that's also kind of an attribute that it's super light, you know, five grams is, is actually pretty cool. Although there's enough lightweight uh, mechanical pencils out these days that I wouldn't buy it just for that. This thing is mainly interesting as a historical relic uh, because it's not super distinctive from a feature standpoint. Obviously you have the twisting double knock thing, but that's kind of it. And then, you know, the aesthetics, I think it's very cool. But if it doesn't really ring out to you so much, then this thing is, again, it's just a fun, interesting historical object, uh, disposable part, a pen or a pencil from Parker. So uh, fun look into history, but maybe that's it for most of us. There is, like I said, a ballpoint version of it. I don't have that, but I'm unable to track one down. And, and maybe I will if I could find a good deal, but uh, it's not super high on my priority list. Anyway, that's the Parker Italia. Thanks for watching.